What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. You'll have to bear with me at the start of this video. I'm a little bit bunged up because I've got some serious hay fever on the go, but you'll be all pleased to know that this is another episode working on my Pinto engine, ready to fit to my Escort. Now in my last Pinto episode, I completely stripped and rebuilt the cylinder heads, and it's now got a fast road cam in there as well. And moving up onto the block, this is what we're going to be focusing on in today's video. This is my 2.1 Pinto bottom ends that I recently purchased. It's all running, it's got fairly fresh pistons in there. I think they were new a couple of years ago and it's been bored out obviously to 2.1. The only thing it really needs doing is a good refresh. Everything's looking a little bit oily and needs a little bit of the Mark II Mitch touch, I think. I do also have a box full of practically new parts along with my RS2000 style sump that needs fitting. So without further ado, I'm gonna get the last remaining pieces off of this block and start to get it ready and prepped up for paint. The engine block has now been degreased, wire brushed, and it's looking nice and matte, ready for some fresh paint. So without further ado, with my modified paintbrush, I'm gonna paint the block. As you would have just seen, I've now flipped the block upside down so I can work on it much easier. I'm gonna clean up this lip because it is so important that the lip on the bottom of the block is clean to make sure that the seal is as tight as possible, as good as possible, and it isn't gonna leak any oil. As you can see, I've done a little bit more than just clean up the block surface. What I also done is I removed the housing that sits around the crank pulley because I've got a new one of them. I then removed the auxiliary pulley along with the little housing that that's got as well, just so I can clean up this whole area. And now I'm gonna refit with the new gaskets and new housing. I cleaned the aluminium casing for the auxiliary shaft. Go something like that. But yeah, that came up really nicely. This is a new part anyway, which I fitted to the old block. And here's the gasket. So I'm gonna get all of these fitted and then that will allow me to fit the sump as well. That is the sump now all bolted down. I went rounds and done corner to corner, working my way in, and I've just gone around and nipped all of the little Allen key bolts up. Anyway, let's flip the engine back over the right way and start to build up even more. A couple of days have passed and it's now a sunny Sunday and I'm gonna be cracking on in the garage. I've got a few more parts to add on to this side of the engine and then I'm going to be fitting my head and then we'll just get everything built up that I've got in the box. Don't know why my arm looks so white. <laughs> GoPro's on one today because it's a bit too sunny for Britain. Yeah. 
The main reason I'm time lapsing most of this is because I've done it before to my other block. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, I've already done this in another video. The only thing I did want to mention is when fitting the new dipstick and tube, I'm going to lock tight this now because on the other block I didn't and loads of people recommended that I did. So just going to whack a bit of lock tight in there as well this time. It's still really sunny out here, so it's quite hard to tell what colour I've actually painted these cogs and pulleys. But they're actually beige, the same colour as my Mark II Escort. I think it's going to look wicked. I started this morning cracking on with a block and it was nice and sunny, but the heavens have just opened and it's tipping it down outside, thunder and lightning as well. But that's not going to stop us. I've dropped the garage door down and we're going to crack on. This is the little aux pulley and I've also done the water pump. Both beige, I think they look quite cool. Once the head's on, I don't think they'll look too much at all. Anyway, talking about putting the head on, I've got my 2.1 head gasket. The part number is Foxtrot Tango 774 Golf. For anyone wanting to know i'm going to get this unboxed and laid out on the block the block surface is already really clean here's the new gasket just line it up slightly there we go that's looking really good The heavens have just opened again. Now the range proper stop and start, so I'll just have to quickly talk to you guys while I can. These are the head bolts that I'm using. They are the Torx heads. I think you can get a spline head as well, but yeah, I'm using the T55 ones. Just putting them in by hand at the moment. That is mental. What? Well that was a crazy summer storm, literally come out of nowhere, just started lashing it down, there's still echoes of thunder in the distance. You would have seen that I had the garage door propped open and it was hammering so hard that the water was starting to come in, so I had to quickly go out there and move the bricks. So yeah, I did get a little bit damp myself. Whilst it was raining outside, I managed to get all of the Torx head bolts in. It's been a couple of days since I've been out in the garage working on the Pinto engine. Where I got to, I had put the new head gasket on and the cylinder heads, but I needed to torque down the head bolts. A bloke called Mark on Facebook gave me the correct torque procedure along with the torque settings. But I haven't got this locked tight in my hand for no reason. I'm just about to fit the new vernier pulley and we will time up the engine and put the tensioner and belt on and then we can start figuring out how to set this new camshaft up. Here is my cylinder head as it stands, all torqued down and I've just lined up the keyway on the bottom of the cam to mark up with this tiny little timing hole, as you can see. That is in line. Just before we go any further, I just want to point out something that nearly caught me out. So here we have the timing marks for the crankshaft. As you can see, that's all lined up. And I've also lined up the top camshaft. But after one full rotation of this, the keyway will be pointing at the top. So you could look down here and think, oh, it's in time, but it's not because the crankshaft spins twice, but the camshaft only spins once, if that makes any sense. So the amount of time it takes 
The crank to do two rotations, the camshaft will do a full one rotation. But yeah, just make sure that keyway is at the bottom and you'll have no problems. Now it's time to fit my vernier pulley. There we go. Now this vernier pulley was actually given to me by a bloke called Lee. So massive shout out if you're watching Lee. I really do appreciate it. I know you gave me this quite a few months back now, but it's finally came in use. I've now got the timing belt on. As you can see, this marker is bang on down here. And I've still bang on up here. Now all I'm doing to set the tension is I've just got a screwdriver in here and just lever in it. And then I'll do up the adjustable 13 mil bolt. Now there is meant to be a spring here, but you don't have to run it. You can just set the tension yourself. Yeah, the spring probably is better, but doing it like this. What I've done now is I've fitted the cam belt to the timing marks that I was talking about a second ago. Now what else you can see here is my timing disc and a marker. I've just literally bolted it on there, side of the water pump, and got it bang on TDC. So what I've got set up here, in spark plug number one hole, I've got a quarter inch extension with my DTI gauge going into it. It's just on this magnetic base. It took me quite a while to set this up, but it's now in there and it will be reading my dwell periods. So what I've now got is a big bar on my crank pulley. Now I found using a bigger bar is better for accuracy because when you're sort of ratcheting a small ratchet around you can jump quite a lot whereas with the bar you can have nice slow movements so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to turn my crank around and you can see it's starting to come up the figures and now it's on 51 now 51 doesn't mean anything to me but this is just a number it stopped on so now i'll keep moving the crank i'm moving it i'm moving it i'm moving it I'm moving it and now it's just starting to come back down so that is my dwell period there so I was I was moving it only very slightly if I go back again you can see I'm moving it slightly now still moving it and it's coming back down so that is the dwell period of the piston coming up and then just stopping ever so slightly and then coming back down I then come down here and watch my disc so I'm just gonna put it onto 51 now nearly there that's 51. So now it's on 51. That is the start of my dwell period. As you can see, it's one degree before TDC. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep turning it ever so slightly. You've got to be really careful with it. And there, it's just changed there. So now you can see it's one degree after TDC. So pretty much, I've, I've been fiddling around with this for ages. So now if I put it in the middle, that is going to be my true 100% perfect TDC. Hopefully I've explained that in a way that's easy enough to follow and you guys understand. So basically if my top dead center was set one degree before top dead center, then that, that's all going to matter. Like when we're doing all these fine adjustments, it will it could cost you like a couple of brake horsepower. So that's why you're trying to find the, the real middle point of top dead center which i've now found and i'm glad i've adjusted my crank up to that now what i've done is i've moved my dti gauge up to the inlet valve as you can see here i've got it resting at the top of the spring just there now we're looking for the dwell period once again so i've been rotating the crank and when it stops i'll be marking down the figure and rotate it again and I write down the figure and most of my figures were reading about 124, 125, 126 degrees and then on the other side it was 31, 130, 129 even but basically I've came to the conclusion I've done this loads of times and it's roughly between 125 and 130. I'm just checking the DTI gauge and it's on the number that it's staying on so I'm just going to rotate it and it's currently on about 124, 125 keep rotating it, keep rotating it and it's just starting to go down now so it's, it's pretty much banging between 125 and 130 so what we're trying to do is find the dwell period for the opening of the inlet valve so as the spring gets compressed 
it will eventually stop for a split second, then it will come back up. So when the number on the DTI stops, I'll write down the degrees on the disc and I'll keep on turning the crank and once the numbers start moving again, then I'll write down the other number on the disc. Hopefully that makes sense, we're just trying to get the middle dwell point of the inlet valve. I've just set my time in on the disc, the GoPro doesn't really like picking up numbers but I've set it between 130 and 125, bang in the middle. One thing I haven't mentioned yet as well is you cannot touch this marker because once you've touched that you need to start all again because that node's top dead centre so uh, yeah just do not touch that. <laughs> Now is the moment of truth, I've got to adjust my vernier pulley. So I've, I've got a adjustable spanner on the hex bit on the camshaft. And what I'm going to do is whilst holding that, I'm going to be very, very careful not to move the cam. And I'm going to slacken off the Allen keys here. And then what I need to do is grab my piece of paper that came with my camshaft. And if we go along here, this is my highlighted one. And we come to inlet timing at full lift. So the valve is at full lift now because um, the spring is completely compressed. And it says 108 degrees. So with that 108 degrees, it is just about here. It's, it's about that far apart, but it will be hardly anything up here. So yeah, I'm just going to get on with it and slacken this vernier pulley off and get along to record it. The spanner, making sure that I don't move anything when I release these. There you go, see look, that was quite good actually, it weren't tightened up too tight, so... Ah. Right. <laughs> right, so what I've now got to do is I've got to hold the cam still whilst I adjust the disc. So this needs to be 108, as I said earlier, but I can't move the cam. No, I fucked it. I fucked it. That's cool, don't worry. Well, there's nothing like a plot twist on a Saturday evening. So basically, when I put the vernier pulley on earlier, I was looking at the, the marking, the hole, and uh, I could either choose like slightly to the right or slightly to the left. There was no like bang on in the middle um, to put the timing belt on. I went slightly to the right, and uh, when I added all the figures up, I couldn't get the vernier pulley to adjust because yeah, it just didn't have enough movement in it. So I thought I must have done something wrong. I covered my tracks and I still came back to the vernier pulley and the fact that it couldn't angle enough or there weren't enough degrees in it. So I thought that the cam sprocket, the vernier pulley, must be on one tooth out. So I turned it around slightly. I've just redone top dead center because it's always good to do that and i've just measured the inlet valve again and i got some brilliant readings so these were my new readings which are much more closer to the 108 degrees that i need to set my cam up to so i've got 112 to 109 that's that's roughly what it is so the dwell period is about 110 111 so that's what i'm going to set it to and then I can adjust the vernier pulley a couple of degrees. So what I've done now is I've set the timing disc up just after 110. It looks like it's pretty much bang on it, but it's just after it. And I'm going to go through and do what I've done before, whereas I undone the vernier and then adjusted it to 108. And then hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be it done. And get rid of that DTI. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. Gun down. Alright, so when I get yeah. to 108, you tell me, yeah? Okay. Now. Yeah? Is that it? Yeah. Now that the timing disc is set to 108 degrees, which the it says on the paperwork it should be, and I've checked the middle of the dwell point, I'm just doing up the vernier pulley. Now one of the most important things to do after timing the engine is to spin it over to make sure nothing clashes. Right, so we're back round to top dead centre, and I'm just going to do a full cycle. Timing marks are still good down there. Timing marks good there. Very happy to say the least. I've actually done it. Okay. I need to give a huge shout out to a bloke called Tom Jones on Facebook. He's recently fitted the exact same Kent Cam Fast Roads cam to his Pinto engine and 
he's practically guided me through this. As I say, I'm, I'm in the trade, I've timed up many engines, but when it comes to tweaking them and tweaking the cam timing, I've never done that before and I'll openly say that. So for him to sort of guide me through it, he sent me loads of information, uh, I really do appreciate it mate, because I was kind of lost when I realised I had to do more time into this. I thought you just had to time up the, the crank and the cam, but it's a little bit more in depth than that and I'm, I'm glad I've done it now for the first time and I can carry on doing it in the future. So thank you very much mate. Now that I've now got the timing bang on on the engine, I'm just gonna start to fit all the parts that are left, I've just got loads of odds and sods to fit. just fitted the alternator onto the side of the Pinto engine but this video does have to come to an end at some point. I've been at it out here for two to three weeks now and at the start I was a bit daunted by the fact I needed to work out the true top dead centre and adjust the cam timing but look at me now I've done it and the engine is built up but it couldn't have been done without the help of the people that I've mentioned and yeah, I just believed in myself and got the engine built up. I always love learning new skills. As I said, I've never adjusted the cam timing on an engine before. It's normally look at the timing marks and then off you go pretty much. So it's always good to learn new skills and I hope that some of you guys have learned with me as well through the video. Anyway, I won't waffle on too much, but the engine is ready to go into the Escorts Bay. I've got to finish off a few little bits, but then we can get it in there for the final time. And I have just purchased a really expensive part for the Pinto. I'm sure you can all guess what that is. It um, sucks all the air in. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting times coming up. I'm gonna get this Escort together. I don't have a deadline now. We're just gonna get it together, get it on the road and start enjoying it. And also, if anyone's attending the Ford show at Sansapod this weekend, I'll see you all there. I'm camping on a Saturday night, and I'll also be showing my Mark II Fiesta on the Sunday. Well, I think that's about it. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.